Hi, my name is Michael Rivnack. I'd like to demonstrate for you asynchronous binding and one of the use cases in particular. It's a relatively newly supported feature in both the automation broker and in the service catalog. Before we talk too much about the feature itself, let's get a provision underway since it'll take a minute or two. We're looking here at an OpenShift console. I've created a demo project space that's currently empty. We can browse the catalog and see in the bottom right here we have this vault APB that I've created. This is the HashiCorp vault project and it uses the standard container image provided by the vault project. We can click through and read that the one and only plan that comes with this APB issues TLS certificates during binding all signed by a single CA. We can click through, there's nothing to configure. We do not want to bind yet at this time. We can create and close. And we can go to the overview and watch this progress. So asynchronous binding is largely an implementation detail behind the scenes, but in it, it enables something fairly powerful. Anytime that we think about the service catalog, we first usually think about provisioning a service. But then if you want to use that service and especially bind or attach it in some way to other applications, we need information about how and where to interact with that service. Some people call this coordinates, but this is really the essence of a binding. You might have some credentials that you would use to authenticate to this service and you may have location information like a host name and a port. Asynchronous binding is a particular workflow that's part of the Open Service Broker API that allows a broker like the Automation Broker to do arbitrary work that it needs to do in order to generate whatever it's going to return to the user. So for example, perhaps a service bundle wants to create a database and create a new user and give that user permission to access that database and then return information about all of that to the user. We saw that demo recently and uh, you can imagine that that takes a certain amount of arbitrary work that needs to be done uh, before returning those credentials. Likewise, perhaps you need to perform an operation like spinning up a virtual machine and interacting with it or provisioning it in some way before returning binding credentials for that virtual machine to a user. Besides those kind of resource intensive use cases where you're creating new resources, uh, you may have other cases where you're just interacting with particular tooling or a particular API. For example, in this case, we're going to create a TLS certificate during binding and return that. Maybe you have a workflow where you need approval of a binding before it can be returned, either by the user themselves through two-factor auth or maybe some enterprise uh, workflow. Or perhaps you want to encrypt credentials and encrypt the binding information uh, in some way before returning it to have end-to-end -end encryption. Those are all use cases where the broker benefits from having an opportunity to do whatever work is necessary behind the scenes while the service catalog waits uh, and then asynchronously finish that work and then return a binding. It looks like our provision is done and we have Vault here deployed and ready to go. And like I said, it's configured already with a self-signed CA and when we do a binding, it's going to create a new certificate pair for us and sign it with its CA and then return all of that to us. So we can click on Create Binding, click through to Parameters. We need to enter one parameter, which is a common name. So we can enter automationbroker.io, which of course is the broker's website. We can click Bind and Close. And now we wait. Fortunately, this should be a fairly quick operation. But right now, the APB is running in the cluster, and it is using the Vault client to interact with the Vault service 
and obtain the certificate. Looks like it's done. So we can view that secret and reveal the secret. And we see that we have a CA. Of course, this is the only the public portion of the CA. And we have both the public and private portions of our new certificate. And just for fun, we can take this new certificate and head over to our terminal and look at it. So here we see we did get the common name that we asked for. And we can see that the certificate is valid for three days, which is what Vault is configured for right now. But of course, that can be adjusted to anything you like. So that's a basic demo of, of this kind of workflow. You can imagine that this sort of thing might be useful to a multi-service application where you want to establish trust among a number of services. This particular APB is still an experimental proof of concept, but you can look at it on GitHub. Uh, it's here in this repository and has a readme and is available for you to, to build and experiment with.